Hey everybody, I'm Shashank at AWS and in this video we'll take a closer look at Amazon SageMaker Serverless Inference, a brand new feature in SageMaker that lets you host endpoints for model inference that can automatically start and scale compute resources based on traffic, which means you don't have to manage all the instances under the hood, you don't have to manage scaling policies and all that. In this video, we'll take a closer look at what it is, how it works, who is it for and how to use it. And then we'll take a look at code example where we'll go step by step and talk about all the changes that you need to make in your code in order to host a serverless inference endpoint. Let's get started, shall we? So you trained your model and the next step of course is to host this model as an inference service so that other client applications such as your mobile applications or web services or other web applications can send requests to this endpoint and these requests could be new data such as images or videos or text or whatever it is that you trained your model to process and the model there then processes the data, generates inference results and sends them back. Now to run this model you need compute resources. So, so these compute resources uh, in the past what you would have done is select one of the dedicated instances. These could be your CPU instances such as uh, C5 or M5 or M4 and variety of other instance types or these could be GPU instances and these could be uh, your G4 instances, G5 instances, uh, P3 instances and so on based on your throughput and uh, latency needs. Okay, This is still the uh, preferred approach for certain types of uh, traffic and we'll talk about what those are. With this new capability, what we have now is the ability to host um, a serverless endpoints. If you're used to using serverless services such as uh, Ramdas and Fargates, so you know what are the benefits of serverless um, services are, which means which are you don't have to manage the underlying infrastructure. Now, all you have to do in this case is not specify the instance type, but just specify memory so that your model uh, can be hosted uh, with, with the specified memory. And then uh, you also specify how many concurrent invocations you want to process, okay? That is all you have to do. Now, when the traffic uh, increases, serverless endpoint will automatically scale this, okay? It'll scale out and then scale back automatically based on traffic. Previously, in a real-time real endpoint, you were responsible to set up scaling policies to make sure that enough instances were available to process the new request, okay? So serverless endpoint, you don't have to manage the compute resources, it'll automatically scale out or scale back based on traffic. Okay, now let's take a look at when you should use it. Let's say you are a retailer and you have customers who are visiting your website in order to search for something and you have a machine learning model there that can generate uh, recommendations, maybe from your catalog to the customer, okay? And let's say your traffic looks something like this. So requests come in, there are plenty of requests, and then uh, you're a small retailer, so you don't have any traffic maybe later in the day. And uh, later in the evening, uh, you, have, you have traffic spike again, okay? If you see this sort of a sporadic pattern and maybe you have spikes in between the day, so basically you don't need a dedicated instance that needs to be running all the time. Uh, if you do, then your cost per inference goes up because your instance is running throughout the day, whereas you only have requests coming in specific times of the day. Contrast this with uh, maybe you're, you're a retailer who has a lot of customer requests coming in all the time. In this case, your traffic may look something like this where you have uh, traffic consistent throughout the day, okay? Uh, in this case, your cost per inference uh, uh, is, is low if you have a dedicated instance because your instance is constantly being kept high at utilization. So if you have a very um, predictable workload, predictable request, then a real time with a dedicated instance is probably a better option for you. If you have sporadic requests, unpredictable workload, and you don't have a latency specific application because when you have an endpoint that, when you have a serverless endpoint that is idle during this region, and then you have a new request come in say later in the day, there is a cold start period here, okay? 
this uh, cold start period uh, adds delay for the first inference that request that comes in and the subsequent in, uh, inference request will be quick so you don't have a, if you don't have a latency specific application and you don't mind the cold start period you can save a lot of um, uh, cost with serverless inference because the cost for inference will be lower if you have predictable workloads then real-time inference may be the right one for you because you get to choose the type of instances but then you're still responsible for setting up scaling policies and all that okay so how the when to use which right now let's take a look at how you can use uh, serverless endpoints with SageMaker now if you're used to deploying models with SageMaker you know there are three steps uh, depending of course if you're using the SageMaker SDK or Boto3 SDK um, SageMaker SDK will make it possible with one step but we'll talk about what happens under the SageMaker SDK which is the steps that the Boto3 uh, Python SDK takes which are first you will specify uh, what your model is so you'll create a model which means you take your model you also specify the serving container this could be your tensorflow serving or PyTorch serving or could be any other server that maybe you built um, uh, in-house right so you specify this and you create a model using create model API and then you specify an endpoint config. This is where you specify if you want a serverless inference or you want a real time inference. If you create a, a serverless inference here, uh, you specify just the memory as we discussed. So you, you specify the memory and you specify the concurrent invocation. If you specify a real time inference, you have to specify, uh, you know, what kind of instances you want like P3 or g4 and how many right so depending on if you want serverless or real time you'll specify so in this example we are taking a look at the brand new launched feature which is serverless inference and finally you create an endpoint and uh, that will take the endpoint configuration as guidance and create an endpoint whether it's serverless or, or uh, real time now there is an additional step at some point in the future let's say you have sporadic requests coming in today and serverless endpoint is working great for you. Say so tomorrow, uh, you get continuous stream of requests. Maybe your customers' uh, requests have, have grown and you have a more predictable workload and you have low latency requirements suddenly because of uh, you know newer models or newer kinds of applications and you want to switch over to real time. That is possible. All you have to do is create a new endpoint config uh, endpoint config okay and specify that it's a real-time endpoint config and then you can call an update endpoint function and then it'll update your existing serverless endpoint into a real-time endpoint and we'll take a look at this in the demo so that's the high-level concepts now let's jump over to the code demo and see this in action Okay, what I have here is a Jupyter Notebook that's running on Amazon SageMaker Studio. You could of course run this on um, your, own, uh, uh, your own laptop if you want to as long as you have the Boto3 and SageMaker SDK installed. But there are many benefits to using Studio such as integrated way of uh, looking at endpoints and uh, experiments and uh, you know reinference recommended jobs. Some of these I'll cover in subsequent videos. So this is, uh, there are enhancements to the typical Jupyter Notebook interface that integrates all these SageMaker capabilities into a single user interface. So you don't have to leave this in order to take a look at uh, uh, not just training and experiment management, but also deployment. So let's go through this notebook. I'll make this code available to you so that you can run it offline. So we'll start off by importing typical packages, SageMaker, TensorFlow. I'm importing TensorFlow because I'm going to start with a pre-trained TensorFlow model and host it with SageMaker inference, uh, serverless inference, okay? So let's go ahead and run the import step. We'll then uh, use Boto3 to get the SageMaker and SageMaker runtime client. This is what we'll use to one, host the endpoint and then uh, invoke the endpoint to get results to test the endpoint essentially, right? Uh, after that, the first step is to Take your model and load it to Amazon S3. When you call uh, create endpoint, you have to have your model in Amazon S3 
uh, when you create a model you need to have your model file in amazon s3 so what we'll do now here is actually uh, take the vanilla resnet 50 model from um, upstream tensorflow download it and then we'll create a tar file um, which is specified here this is the format sagemaker experiments uh, expects it's a tar file with not just your model but also any inference uh, pre-processing scripts or post-processing scripts if you need so i do have uh, a pre a pre-processing script here called inference called pi and i'm going to bundle all of that into this star file and then we upload it to amazon s3 so i'll go ahead and run the steps uh, while that goes on let's talk about the next step so you specified your model you uploaded it to amazon s3 the next step is to then specify what your serving container is. Now this could be TensorFlow serving, this could be TotServe as I mentioned, or any other serving container that you have. You need to provide the uh, container uh, URI. And if you don't have uh, your own container, you can pick one from the ones that AWS offers. So what you see on screen is AWS deep learning container images. Let's say you want TensorFlow for inference you'll see that there are many tensorflow inference containers with different versions of tensorflow for cpu and gpu and so on so you can just copy this and uh, provide it to the end uh, create model so that you can use this to host the model in the endpoint uh, if you don't want to remember the whole <laughs> um, url for the uh, container image then you can use this handy function called uh, uh, image uri retrieve where you specify the framework, you specify the framework version, the Python version, you specify instance here. Uh, we specify a CPU instance, although I'm not going to be hosting it on this instance. I'm going to be hosting it uh, with serverless endpoint, which means you don't have to worry about instances. We specify the instance here just so that you uh, tell, uh, you pull the right uh, container, which is, um, optimized for CPUs, not GPUs, because serverless endpoint will run on CPU-backed instances, not GPU-backed instances uh, currently. Okay, so by using this handy function, you get access to this um, container, which is a TensorFlow serving, uh, which is optimized for CPU. Okay, now recall our three steps. Create model, create endpoint configuration, create an endpoint, okay? We start by creating a model. So first step here is to create a model and we use a create model uh, API here. And as we discussed, we have to specify the container image, which we just retrieved, and the S3 model path where we uploaded the model into Amazon S3. I'm going to run this, create a model right here, okay? Uh, at any given time, uh, point in time, if you ever want to check if the model was created. You can always go back to the SageMaker console. On the left here, under inference, you have uh, many different options for um, inference, but the three steps I mentioned are also here. So models, endpoint configurations, and endpoints. So if I head over to model, I can see the model that I just created here, Keras serverless, okay? This is the model I just created. You can click on it, take a look at uh, the container that you specified, uh, right? This is the container that you specified and so on, okay? You can always come here to check, uh, but you don't have to, right? Uh, it's, it's an option that's available to you. So next step is to create an endpoint configuration. This, as I mentioned, is where you will specify whether you want a real-time endpoint or the brand new serverless endpoint. So with serverless endpoint, you just need to specify the memory size and max concurrent invocations, okay? The memory size also dictates how much compute power uh, is allocated for running your model inference, okay? There are many different options here, starting from one gigabyte all the way up to six gigabyte roughly. And depending on the memory size, you get increased compute capability, okay? If you have a large model, or if you have a model that's very compute intensive, then you wanna scale up. I always say this, always start small and then scale up rather than choosing the biggest, baddest uh, configuration. Start small and then scale up, okay? So you specify this. Now, if you were to host a real-time endpoint, which, which was what you would have done prior to this, you would have specified the 
instance type here, right? And the number of instances here. But here you don't have to do that, okay? Just serverless, straightforward. I'm going to execute this and then the next step is to create an endpoint. This is fairly straightforward. You, you just have to specify the endpoint configuration that we just uh, uh, defined above and then we provide it to the create endpoint and it's going to create an endpoint for us, okay? I showed you how you can check the progress in console. You can also check this in SageMaker Studio. Uh, I'll head over to um, this uh, bottom menu option here under this drop down. I'll choose endpoint and you'll see here that uh, inference endpoint is being created and this is the one 31 seconds this is the one I just uh, created okay you can always uh, double click on this take a look at the type of endpoint it's still loading um, uh, it's still being created uh, it's not yet created but once it's created you can take a look at the endpoint uh, you can also send like test test uh, inference requests uh, all through the user interface okay so Let's wait for this endpoint to be created. This will take a couple of minutes. And uh, while we wait, I'll just turn up the clock so you don't have to watch paint dry. And we're back. So the endpoint is uh, now created. You can take a look at this. You should see here that it says it's in service. There you go. It's in service, which means it can now process inference requests. So next, what we are going to do is test the endpoint, okay? I have an image of, uh, of a kitten here that I'm going to download. Um, we'll verify that it's a cat, okay? That is a cat, looks like a cat to me. And then what we'll do is invoke the endpoint using the invoke function. Remember, this is a serverless endpoint. Uh, no instances were specified here. And uh, as the number of requests go, it'll automatically scale out. Uh, so we invoke it. You see here that it took uh, a little more time than required, like uh, eight seconds. Now let's invoke this again, and you should see a request process much quicker. So the very first time there is a delay because there's a cold start, and then your yeah, subsequent invocations are about two seconds in this case. Of course, it's not a very scientific way of measuring it. Uh, about two seconds, okay? The invocation for of this model. Now. If you leave it idle for for some time uh, and then a new request comes in it'll it may take more time um, i've noticed anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds often uh, for the first invocation and the subsequent invocations are quicker now an important thing to note here is maybe the two seconds um, is it's too slow for you right if this latency is not acceptable for your application then you want to switch over to real-time inference where you can specify a more powerful instance such as uh, a GPU instance perhaps that can give you, uh, you know, sub 100 millisecond or 200 millisecond latency that you may desire, okay? Next, we are going to take a look at the results uh, just to verify that the inference is doing the right thing. Uh, a tiger cat or an Egyptian cat, tabby cat, uh, around uh, around the ballpark of what the image is. I don't really know what kind of cat it is. Um, so next, uh, what we'll do is another step of invocation. Um, again, just to check, two seconds, okay. Next, what we will do is switch this serverless endpoint into a real-time endpoint, okay? The way to do this, well, first, the reason to do this is because, as we discussed, maybe you, you're not happy with the latency or you now have a very predictable workload, okay? At this point, you want to switch over to a real-time endpoint. And uh, to do that, you create a new endpoint configuration. And unlike before, where we specified serverless, now we specify the instance type and instance count, okay? Just to show, confirm to you again, let's go back and see what we uh, specified for serverless. So for serverless, we said memory size and max concurrency, right? Whereas for a real-time endpoint, what we specify here is instance type and instance count, okay? Which means we are specifying the specific instance. It could be a CPU instance or a GPU instance of a specific size. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. And then uh, what we'll do is update this endpoint. What happens when you run this is your uh, model a endpoint, let's go take a look at this in the console. You'll see here that it says updating. So what it's going to do is switch out the 
uh, earlier endpoint configuration which was for serverless, serverless to a real-time endpoint configuration. All this happens seamlessly without any downtime, right? It'll update this and it'll switch over to a dedicated instance and then you can go ahead and uh, run inference requests. Again, this will take a little bit of a time. So while this processes, uh, I'm going to sit wait here, but I'm going to turn the clock so that you can come back and take a look at the uh, prediction results. Welcome back again. So now we have our endpoint in service again, and now it's switched over from serverless to real-time endpoint. And let's go invoke this endpoint now and uh, with the same data, the same kitten image, first invocation, um, and then you'll see subsequent invocations are actually uh, way faster. Again, not a scientific way of measuring it, but now we are able to get inference requests in uh, one and a half seconds, okay? Uh, 1.44 seconds. And previously, we saw that the invocation request took about two seconds. So by switching over to a real-time endpoint, um, we have lower latency, but then again, it depends on your traffic, it depends on your workload, okay? So to quickly recap, we took a look at uh, SageMaker serverless endpoints, a great option, low cost per inference option, specifically if you have sporadic traffic workloads and you don't want to manage infrastructure, automatically scales out based on traffic. Um, but if you have uh, if you can tolerate the cold start when there's a quiet period and you're happy with the latency that you get from the serverless endpoint, this can be the most cost-effective option for you. It's currently in preview, so I encourage you to go check it out. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll, I will leave you with a couple of resources. Uh, if you're just catching up on reInvent launches, I have a blog post here. Uh, I'll provide the link in the description with uh, also a video where I talk about all the highlights of the machine learning launches at reInvent. And uh, I'll be creating more deep dive uh, videos for other services that we launched. So if you're interested, stay tuned and see you in the next one.